رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنما Can you please list all the factors which break a person's fast? Does vomiting and bleeding inside one's mouth cause one's fast to be broken? Well, this question is extremely important for each and every Muslim because this is related to our own forms of worship. Knowledge is divided into two types. Knowledge that is mandatory upon every individual to learn, and this is known as fard ayn. And knowledge that is fard kifaya, communal obligation. If I know it, the rest of the community are exempted from learning it. If none of us learn it, we're all sinful. So the religion that is accepted at the side of Allah, this is an information that we must know. Fasting. Ramadan is in a few days' time. Am I obliged to fast? Of course. I have to know the rulings of fasting. It is not permissible for me to say, oh, I didn't know that drinking soft drinks nullifies your fasting. Your ignorance is unjustifiable. You live in the lands of Muslims and the information is available to you. It's an obligation upon you to know it. Zakat of livestock, camels, cows and sheep. Is it an obligatory upon me to know the portions of zakat and how to give it out in every 40 sheep there is one sheep in every five camels there is one sheep in every 30 to 40 cows there is this and that is it mandatory for me to know well this depends do you have livestock no i don't even know the difference between a camel and a cow never seen one in this case it's not an obligation upon you you're not a lesser Muslim if you don't know. Because it's not obliged. Allah will not ask you on the Day of Judgment, how many sheep should we give zakat over a 40 until 120? Allah will not ask you about this because you don't have them. So knowing what breaks your fasting is an obligatory act upon each and every one of us. Because this is an obligation upon all Muslims that is to fast. So what breaks my fast? There are seven things that usually scholars mention when they talk about things that nullify fasting. The greatest of them all is intercourse. Of course, with a spouse. I'm not talking about zina, fornication, adultery. I'm talking about legitimate uh, uh, relationship between a man and his wife. This is totally prohibited on the daytime of Ramadan for a person who is residing. And if he does, or if she does that, then, first of all, the day is void. But they must maintain fasting, though it's void. They have to make up for that day. They have to give expiation, each. And the expiation is to free a slave, or to fast two consecutive months, or to feed 60 poor person, not to choose of these three, but to take them gradually. If you don't have a slave, you have to fast two consecutive months. If you're sick or unable to continue or complete these two consecutive months, then you have to feed 60 poor person. If I'm totally broke and I cannot feed any person, there's nothing for you to do. So this is number one. Number two what takes the ruling of intercourse? What is that? It's known as masturbation. Intentionally ejaculating. Now, having said that, one would say, what about nocturnal emission? Known as wet dreams. Wet dreams are not within your control. When you sleep, you don't have the option or the choice whether to do this or to do that, it happens. So it has no impact on your fasting. 
but to purposely ejaculate, whether by masturbating, by watching something that provokes you to ejaculate intentionally. In this case, this nullifies your fasting. Do I have to pay the expiation of freeing a slave, um, fasting two consecutive months or feeding 60 poor pe uh, people? No, you don't. But it's a sinful thing. And this was mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'arij. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ Allah, when He praised the righteous people by saying that they preserve their own chastity, they do not abuse their private parts in illicit and illegal sexual intercourse. And then Allah says, except having this with their spouses and their right-hand possession. And whoever transgresses and has this desire fulfilled other than that, the spouse is in the right-hand possession, then they are transgressors. So it's sinful, it's transgression, it breaks the fasting, as the majority of scholars stated. So the third thing after intercourse, ejaculation, is eating and drinking. But before we go into the issue of eating and drinking, I might have to be a little bit French. So people would understand that what is meant by intercourse is the actual penetration. And I will not explain more than that. But ejaculation is not intercourse. So if a man has intimacy with his wife without penetration, and he or she ejaculates, this does not fall under the category of intercourse. This falls under the category of masturbation. If penetration takes place without ejaculating, this is intercourse. So they have to be careful to know the difference between the two. Thirdly, eating and drinking. So anything that a person consumes that goes into his stomach would invalidate his fasting. If he does this intentionally, and if he does this remembering and knowing the ruling of it, even if he swallows a pill or he swallows a stone, this would invalidate his fasting. Fourthly, what takes the ruling of eating and drinking. And we spoke earlier about this. And this refers to anything that is nourishing your body, such as glucose and the IV that people take. And they can live on that for a number of days. Fifthly, intentional vomiting. And why do we say intentional vomiting? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is overwhelmed and vomits unintentionally, his fasting is intact. But whoever intentionally and deliberately vomits, then he has broken his fast. So, for example, someone fills up his stomach and all of a sudden, without him intending it, he has to throw out. He goes and rushes to the toilet, he throws out. His fast is intact. Someone who is feeling uneasy, he ate too much and he doesn't feel good, he inserts his finger in his throat and he throws up. His Fasting is invalid because he did that intentionally, whether by inserting his finger, by smelling something repulsive that makes him throw up the same ruling. So these, this is the fifth. And the sixth thing that nullifies fasting is also unintentional, 
which is menstruation and postnatal bleeding. This is something that happens to women and it's not by their choice. It's something that Allah Azza decreed upon them. Once it happens, the fast is void and they cannot fast. And finally, an issue of dispute, which is cupping, in Arabic known as hijama. This is done by slashing the bottom of the neck or the back and sucking out rotten blood. And this is a prophetic means of healing. It is perfect for high blood pressure and for migraines. Those who suffer from migraines, once they do this, they are relieved for like five, six months from their migraines. And the Prophet وسلم, instructed us to do this cupping or hijama. And he himself did it. The scholars differ whether this breaks fasting or not. I'm inclined that it does not break your fasting or affect it, but we mention it because a great number of scholars say it does. But if a person has to do the random check of diabetes, or he has to take a sample of blood for lab tests, does this fall under hijama? The answer is no. There's no problem in doing that. What about blood donation? Well, if you're going to give a pint or two of blood, this takes the same ruling as hijama because it would make you feel weak and weary to those who say that hijama breaks your fasting. Those who say it doesn't, as long as you're still fit and able to um, be active and to function well, then this has no impact. <laughs>